Hello, my name is Mr. Getz. I want to talk about a couple things that are that have to do with substitute teaching. And this isn't going to be the best substitute teaching training video ever. I wouldn't be so bold as to say that this is something that uh, every substitute teacher should use, but this is something that substitutes can use. I've had the opportunity to substitute in 15 different schools over the past year and a half and coming into lots of different situations where uh, there could perhaps be a class that hasn't had a teacher uh, in it um, for a longer extended period of time. Um, I've got some different techniques that I've kind of used and have had uh, success with. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is basically drawing a triangle on the board. So this is something that I do when I enter the classroom. Draw a triangle on the board and then at the bottom I write, I write safe. And sometimes you get the attention of the students by seeing that you have a dry erase marker in your pocket that uh, you brought with you and you write safe. And then you talk to the students about who, who feels safe. Maybe some reasons why particular students don't uh, feel safe. And you can do a little bit of differentiation with some index cards and say, here, write some uh, reasons why you perhaps might not feel safe. And sometimes this discussion will go for 60 seconds. Uh, you can drag it out as long as you want. Um, it, it, it could go the, the full 50 minutes talking about safety, but the goal is to start to, to work up this, this pyramid here. Um, and what I've seen happen is a substitute's got to take attendance. Uh, there's going to be students going in and out. Uh, there's typically students that uh, once they do see there is a sub, uh, that kind of changes uh, their plans uh, for the day. So uh, it may be that the sub will be pretty much standing kind of by the door and attempting to identify and get names of as many students as, as, as possible to do attendance properly. Now, so that's all kind of going on as, as this is being written on the board. So the first thing I talk about is safety. The second thing I say is opportunity. opportunity. I say, what do we have the opportunity to do today? And get some blank stares. Uh, sometimes somebody will volunteer that this is a math class or that this is a, a English class and I say we have the opportunity to do what's written on the board. Lots of times a, a teacher of record will leave a list of things for the substitute kind of on the board. There'll be some papers that are by the desk perhaps. There's something that's been emailed in the absentee management system to, to look in and see uh, what the plans are for the day. So that is what the students have the opportunity to do. If there are no plans, in that situation, it may be the fact that the students have the opportunity to get to know one another better, to have a conversation with the substitute teacher about something they may not have, may not have known uh, about that substitute teacher or something they hadn't known about another classmate. There's the ability to play a game as simple as 20 questions. So you're thinking of a person, place, or thing, and the students have to, you write it down on a slip of paper, then you know, hide it, and the students have to answer, it's yes or no questions they ask to find out, if they can find out um, uh, what that thing is. Um, one of the kind of things that I've run into is classes that have had substitutes for an extended period of time, it's helpful to hold an election. And in that election, what you do is each student gets one vote, and you vote basically for a class president in that classroom for that period only. And the class president's job is to talk about what they had been doing in class, talk about what they're going to be doing in class the next day, and to have a little bit of a little bit of memory as to, to what has been going on in the classroom. And then that can be uh, told to the substitute, and then I'll give the substitute something to, to, to work off of and, and use. Another position could be somebody who's like a judge. A judge would basically moderate if there was some kind of um, a dispute uh, between a couple of students. Uh, the judge would be able to help moderate that. And then the last character, or the last character, the last position to be voted on uh, would be uh, kind of like a lawyer. And that person's specific job is to identify students by name. Because one of the biggest problems that subs have is they don't know who people are. And if they don't know the names, then they can't either do things that have to do with rewards, uh, kind of success stories, or if unfortunately there's a reason to have uh, an administrator involved, the students can't be identified without, without knowing those names. And it can't be something that is punitive to that one student that's identifying the names. 
hence the election and those three uh, positions. So that's something that there could be an opportunity to do in the class is to have an election. And the third thing, I come in, I say, well, Mr. Getz doesn't have any control over Jenna chasing Jeff. Uh, Mr. Getz doesn't have any control over somebody uh, potentially um, uh, jamming the pencil sharpener. Uh, what, Mr. what Mr. Getz has control over is his own attitude and he attempts to maintain a positive attitude. So that's why I put at the top here. Um, and recently when going through this pyramid with a group of high school students, it was said when I asked about attitude, what is attitude, it came up that it was a, an inherently negative word, uh, much like rhetoric is a word that is sometimes said uh, to be a, a negative word. And attitude, if it's used in a sentence, the, this way, well, he had an attitude, then that's kind of negative. But attitude is simply your view on any given situation that you're involved in. And I tend to maintain a positive attitude because I think that that's what will lead by example uh, for the students in that classroom to, to decide to have a, a positive attitude as well. Um, so those are the three things um, coming into the classroom uh, to substitute. And sometimes it, it takes all period uh, to kind of get through it. Um, you definitely want to improvise and uh, riff off of um, what the students are bringing to the table, what the students are deciding uh, that's important to them um, to discuss. And if, uh, if, if done well and if, if practiced enough, uh, before you know it, the, uh, the period is up and then you're on to uh, the, next, uh, the next task, uh, whatever it is. But my name is Mr. Getz. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me in the classroom.